Hi guys, welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to be having a look at virtual matrices and how we set these up in FPP and Xlites. Now what is a virtual matrix? A virtual matrix is uh, when you don't want to use a traditional panel like this, uh, this is a P10. If you don't want to use one of these and instead you want to use an old TV uh, or even a projector, then you can do so using FPP. Today we're going to be using a Raspberry Pi uh, 3B Plus, uh, this one here, which we're going to talk to over Wi-Fi. We're going to plug into the HDMI output here and we're going to connect it up as if we were connecting it to a TV uh, or a projector. But I'm going to connect it this time to my ATEM switcher uh, so that we can record the output to include on the video here. So let's dive straight in and get it set up on FPP. So all I need to do is to connect my Pi to uh, the HDMI output and give it some power. Now, I've already configured uh, the Pi to talk to my network. So it's just going to come up on my Wi-Fi and, uh, and we can talk to it then and get FPP. So in FPP now, I've just got a, a fresh install here. All I've done is go through the initial setup screen and I've expanded the disk. Apart from that, it's ready to go. So let's get it populated and configured for a virtual matrix. So I'm going to go for input output setup and channel outputs. I'm going to go to other and then I'm going to go to add and it asks me to select an output type. So I'm going to select virtual matrix at the bottom of the list and it's created here a model for me for a new virtual matrix. It's auto-creating the model. We don't want to invert it. You can flip it upside down if you've got your telly or your projector you've had to mount a peculiar way. The output port, if you're using a Pi 4 that has two HDMI outputs, then you would have a choice of FB1 or FB2 uh, sorry, FB0 or FB1 at this point, because our 3B Plus only has a single HDMI, we just get the FB0 option. And then we're gonna, it's gonna ask us for the size of the matrix. In this case, it's given us the defaults of 192 by 108, which is plenty big enough uh, for the demonstration today. So I'm going to make that active and I'm going to save and it wants a reboot, uh, sorry, a restart of FPPD. So let's give that a go. There we go, FPPD has now restarted. So we're ready to test. Now our start channel is number one here at the moment and ends at 62,208. So that's given us approximately 20,000 uh, pixels, if you like, on this thing, because each pixel uh, is three colors, red, green, and blue. So it uses three channels. So 62,208 divided by three is uh, just over 20,000. So I'm going to go now to test it and let's see if we get some output. Under status control display testing, we can do a cycle RGB and let's see if we now get an output. And there we go. We can see now that we're accurately outputting the RGB testing. Now, if I change that to a chase RGB, then we'll see stripes going across. So let's give that a go. And there we go. There's the stripes. 
slowly moving across as each pixel RGB moves over. So that's the basic setup in FPP, really quite straightforward. Let's now go into Xlights and configure the same, and then we can demonstrate our very best uh, Xlight sequence coming through onto FPP. So we have a vanilla install here of Xlights. What I'm going to do now is to add my controller. Now my laptop here is actually on a different Wi-Fi network to my uh, Pi, so I'm going to put it in manually. There we go. I'm going to set the vendor to FPP. Model is going to be FPP, mm, LED, we'll go for LED panels and see what it does, but that should be fine. And save that. Now I'm going to set it at this point for DDP. That's configured already for DDP. Uh, that's the fine, that's a fine protocol to use uh, nowadays. Now I'm going to go to my layout and drag in a new matrix from the options here. Go. That's a roughly 16 by 9 shape. Now we'll leave it the name matrix. Our direction is going to be horizontal, so it's going to be scanning each row at a time. And that means the number of strings is going to be the number of rows. So in this case, we were looking at 108. And the nodes per string, each row across is going to be the equivalent of one string. So there were 192 going across. There we go. And for some reason, it's given us a start channel of two, but we'll move that in a second. And it ends at 62,209. So that's just one out from where we were in FPP but the two need to align to make it work. What I'll do now is I'll go back to my controllers, go to visualize, and just drop the matrix onto my LED panel output. And save. And there we go, it's moved the channels for us as we did that. So it now lines up with 1 to 62208. So Xlights has now got the right channels in it on the right controller. What we're left with is setting up uh, an example um, little sequence. So I'm going to go into Layout. I'm going to go for File new sequence, animation, 40 frames per second. And there we go, I can now pull a butterfly down onto my matrix. There it is, we've got a 30 second butterfly. Lovely. Let's give that a save. Going to overwrite an existing sequence there. There we go, that's saved. Now I can do a render. And that takes a moment with 30,000 pixels to look after. I'm oh, sorry, 20,000 pixels to look after. Render, save. And we should be ready then now to test from Xlights directly into FPP. But we have one more step to do on FPP before we do that and that is to set it up to allow inputs. So let's flip back to our FPP, and I'm going to go for Input Output Setup Channel Inputs. Now for DDP, 
all I need to do is to enable the input and save. It will automatically set itself up with the rest of the setup once it starts receiving the DDP info from Xlights. So all we need to do is to turn it on and it will take it from there. So that's set up and ready. Let's go back to Xlights. We've rendered. All I need to do now is to turn on my output to lights. There it is. And press play and we should get some activity on the Pi. And there we go. We can see that it's working uh, very nicely in fact, considering both the laptop here and the Pi are on Wi-Fi, that's running pretty well. We're not getting any um, tearing or ripping in the output. That, that's running through beautifully. So I hope you found that useful. As always, take care, have fun, and we'll see you on the next one. Bye for now. <music>